Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. Well, good morning, and thank you for joining today, the Hello Self Podcast. I am Patricia Leonard, and I'll be your host, and I'm so excited for my guest today, Ray Greenip. Say hi, Ray. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you more about Ray, and then she will share her own story about her journey career journey, her life journey. The thing I like about Ray is she is a total woman. And you will hear that in her story. She's a mother, a wife, an entrepreneur. She's worked in the corporate world. And she knows how to take care of herself as a woman and doesn't let that all fall through. So if any of you are out there saying, I don't know how I could do this. I'd love to start my own business or I'd love to sinuses um, or I'd love to um, get out in the corporate world or maybe just get out more. I just seem like I've given up my life when I became a mother. It's not necessary. And Ray will show you a little bit about that. And I want to honor her for her motherhood and her ability to be the total woman. So now just a little bit about her from my perspective. We've worked together for a couple of years now. And um, it's funny because no matter how long you work with somebody, you still learn something about them. So when she sent her bio to me, even though I have known her for a while, basically on the side of business that uh, I am dealing with because she has helped me move forward even when I didn't know what I was doing. So always remember there's a coach or someone out there who can help you move your business forward if that's what you want to do. So I'm going to give you just a little overview of Ray. And like I said, I'll turn it over to her and then we'll have a conversation. We'll just let it go where it goes. Ray calls herself the customer relations solutionist. And her whole career and her life and her whole focus and everything I know about Ray is building relationships. And from what I know from my corporate background and from my business background, there's nothing more important than building relationships and for business growth but for helping others. And that's something that Ray is really focused on is helping others accomplish their goals. This is something she said in here, and I like this a lot. Uh, My calling is to create experiences for people that evoke inspiration and positive emotion. And I can vouch for that, that that's exactly what she does. And I think as you listen to her story, you begin to see the kind of person that she is just from the business goals that she has. And there's just one more thing that I'd like to point out here that she said, as the customer relations solutionist, I continue, I combine, excuse me, elements of marketing service design, customer experience to customize solutions in the following areas. And this is something that she will really highlight, but I want to show you where her background is. Customer relationship management, uh, implementing those tools, processes, automations, and integrations, websites. I mean, she does it all. So if you're looking for a coach (laughs) or a marketing strategist, customer experience strategist, Ray is it. So what I'm going to do now is turn it over to Ray and then we'll just, I'll just let her take us on her journey um, because I don't think she's always lived in Tennessee and maybe she'll even tell you a part of that. Ray, you take it from here and give us your story. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Patricia. I really, um, it's, it's so much fun being here today with you. And um, as Patricia said, we have a really great relationship. 
Um, so it's just kind of exciting to to get on and, and chat. Um, and so, uh, well, I'll start there. Um, I did move uh, from New Jersey four years ago to the Nashville area, and um, it was very exciting. Uh, at the time, I wasn't really sure what career move I wanted to make next. Um, and so I just started meeting people, you know, I didn't know anybody here. So I just kind of started networking and, and meeting people. And I was like, gosh, you know, I need to kind of build a network here. And through my old company, you know, I, I had talked to um, somebody there that had, you know, contacts down here and stuff as far as, but I didn't know that I wanted to stay in, um, in that, in that realm, which, which was my, uh, my background at the time was, coming from um, purchasing and food imports. So that's, um, that's you know, kind of the, the, the corporate position that I left uh, when I moved down here. So as I started networking, you know, I kind of um, really wasn't sure what direction I wanted to go. And then as I was talking to some um, business owners, you know, and just kind of talking about life and 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 uh, business and what challenges they were facing. Um, you know, I would kind of give input and said, "Oh, well, you know, I would do this or I would do that or that kind of thing." And then a couple of people said to me, "Well, um, you know, can I just pay you to do some stuff?" You know, and and things like that. So I was like, "Well, yeah, sure." You know, and uh, so it kind of my business kind of started happening around me. Um, naturally. And then um, I was six months pre pregnant with my first son. And I said, um, you know, I think I'm going to market this as a business. So uh, I did. And um, here we are, fast forwarding um, a few years. And uh, that was actually almost, uh, well, when I started... Yeah, that. it was 2018 that I started it. And then I started actually marketing it as a business um, in March of 2019. So, um, or no, earlier than that, just like December of 2018, now that I think about it, because I was, I was, like I said, I was about six months pregnant. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so then of course, you know, my first child was born and, um, you know, motherhood came into my life and, um, you know, that's a heck of a role to take on, um, the transition to motherhood is, um, crazy and yes. anybody that's been through it is, um, obviously experienced it. So, um, but, uh, then after just a couple, you know, just kind of standard, like, like people kind of do in the corporate world, you know, taking maternity, you know, a couple months maternity leave and then jumping back in. And that's, that's exactly kind of what I did. Um, I jumped back in with two feet um, after just, uh, you know, probably about two, three months or something like that. And, uh, you know, at the time I wasn't, I, you know, I was just, I was kind of doing uh, what, you know, whatever my clients needed, I, you know, I was doing. So like I had, I came across a client that needed a website. So I taught myself WordPress and, you know, learned um, the ways of, of building and development. Um, so that's, uh, that's kind of where, where my business, you know, wound up and it wound up being a really great fit as far as um, being a mom. I'm lucky enough to have um, my mom around that helps with my kids uh, during the day so I can work. So that's, uh, that's, that's good. It's kind of a team dynamic that we have here. And then, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes too, it's my husband, of course, works as well. And then, you know, his afternoons end generally earlier than mine. So then usually we do kind of like a trade off and then, you know, but I wind, I, I wind up working sort of all sorts of crazy hours um, to catch up when I'm busy, which is, which is fine. But that's that's the thing is is balancing really mm -hmm. the role of motherhood and knowing when you need to be there um and also and in running a business because we can get so involved in the business that we forget about life that's very true um and you know that that probably now more than ever is where I'm probably experiencing that a little bit. Um, I 
wound up having my second son. Um, my kids are pretty close together. So then I had another big, you know, kind of big break where I was, you know, maternity leave again, and then jumped again, a couple months later, jumped back in two feet. And um, things have things have really heated up over the last couple of well, yeah, I would say maybe two, three months for for my business. And um, which is great. So finding that balance right now with having a two year two year old and a three year old, um, making sure that I'm there for every second, you know, making sure that they don't miss me, you know, having me um, is, is quite the balancing act. It really is yeah. because, and then, like I said, kind of knowing when, okay, you need, like, I need to physically spend time with them and, you know, it doesn't matter. Well, you know, I'll get done what I need to, but just, you know, I need to pull myself away right now. Right. Um, and, kind of that's the thing too is um you know this business has really taught me and my kids of course have really really taught me to let go of so much and learn how to fly by the seat of my pants because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know it's um it really is you know there's a lot of and this is going to sound I don't know this 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 may not just be put it out there design. because somebody yeah. has thought of it too or yeah. has experienced it so just yeah. throw it out yeah. It can, yeah, it's not going to be a popular thought in some circles, but I'll tell you, you know, there, there's there been points in my business where I've gotten overwhelmed with um, listening to, you know, various, you know, business gurus or, you know, various advice and, and saying, okay, so my day needs to look like this and I need to block off time and I need to do this. And what I found is I wind up getting really frustrated and, and hitting my head against the wall because I'm like, then I feel like, well, I'm not sticking to that. And I can't, well, I can't do this. And I can't, and I get this like internal conflict going over these things. And, you know, I started realizing, you know, just a huge thing to put out there. What worked for somebody doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for you. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't try things and different ideas and things. But now I'm much more, um, and, and again, just so that, you know, anybody listening that's thinking about starting a business, I'm four years in and I'm now just finally really trusting my own instincts with things like, no, I don't think that works for me, but thank you, you know, and, and you know, kind of knowing where to strictly enforce, you know, like, okay, um, recently I, you know, I've, I've come to realize that my finances practices are probably a little archaic the way that I run them in my business. So that's something that I am putting forth effort and making sure that I'm prioritizing right now. And I'm going through a course that's fabulous. I've got to give a, a big shout out to um, Michelle Quinones. Um, she has, she's a, um, a, a fractional CFO and she just put out this beautiful, amazing course that helps people like myself that are in service-based businesses that are solopreneurs kind of get their, get their head around finances and, um, and, and really how to, how to run things. So I've always run a really tight ship with my finances. Um, but like I said, but my ways of doing so are a little archaic mm -hmm. and not really in the now. So, um, <laughs> You know, I think you. that's an issue. That's a great point to bring up because I yeah. think that's an issue that every person who starts their business, how do you price? Um, how do I keep track of what I'm doing? Do I take on everything or do I say no to some things? So I think some major things that you're bringing up are exactly the uh, issues that small business owners or those who are thinking about becoming a solopreneur uh, face and have to make a decision about. So you had another thought there? No, no, no. I was just going to, uh, yeah. What you, what you just said is, is learning to say no mm -hmm. is for, for a lot of women, that is a huge, huge yes. uh, roadblock. Yes. So um, because you don't want to disappoint where, you know, a lot of us are people pleasers by nature. Um, my corporate life was all about that. You know, um, you ever heard the term, you know, if you need something done, give it to somebody that's busy. 
<laughs> that was my corporate life. And that's honestly, I mean, that's kind of a little bit, I think of my hallmark of my business right now too, is that I'm like, yeah, just firing it away and get, you know, um, and, and busy. So it's just like, well, my phone's still ringing nonstop and it's like, okay, you know, that's, I feel like that's the general consensus of humans, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, but the learning to say no and knowing kind of when to, when to let go, um, you know, I, because I'm a solopreneur, I do struggle with too, um, something that's huge in a in mindset wise in, well, I can't, I can't bring in somebody to do that. I can't delegate, you know, I can't, um, well, what, you know, if I brought on it right now, I'm going through this is I'm to the point where in December, I'm going to need to bring on a, a, an assistant. So I, I'm saying to myself, okay, but, but what can I give them to do? I need to do that. Oh no, I need to do that. I need to do. And, and so now I'm not now in, in my corporate life, when I met, when I manage staff, I'm very hands off. So it's like, cause I expect I, my expectation is somebody's coming in and hitting the ground running. Cause that's how I am. Right. I don't ask per- permission. I kind of, I'm one of those people. I, I see something and I go for the gusto. I do it. I'm not like, well, let me find out and let me, you know, I'll pay the price later. After you've seen what a great, great work this is, then I'll pay the price later. You know what I mean? So, you know, so, and, and, and I'd say that not to toot my own horn, but just saying that, you know, I'm confident in what I do and anything I'm moving forward with, I'm 110% behind. So, you know, that's, that's why, But, you know, uh, Ray, you bring up a point that I think probably is true for a lot of people is you said, I'm not sure what to delegate to the assistant or how to go about that. And I think that the problem is I face this same thing is that it's our baby. It's our baby. And we know more about how to do it. And yet we want somebody to help and we want to give people opportunities, but yet it's very, very difficult. And I don't know about you, but I'm kind of a control freak anyway. (laughs) I like to do it my way. But um, in corporate America, I was taught the same thing that you have to trust. And that's how people feel and will take more responsibility is when you allow them to make some decisions. But that is a big transition for a small business owner. It is. And I, you know, and that's what I'm right now. I'm that's one of the other things I'm working on is brainstorming what tasks can be taken off my plate. And, you know, so, so certain things like kind of back of house stuff, that's what I'm starting with. And I'm like, okay, you know, um, probably billing, probably keeping track of maybe my expenses, yes. um, you know, or, or even, even some management, even in my own internal house budget, because mm-hmm. I'm very, very meticulous about that. And, mm-hmm. but being meticulous is time consuming. So this is where, you know, I want to be, um, I want to free up my time so that if, you know, if, if my phone's ringing a lot that particular week, I don't feel like I'm drowning in the work that I need to get done. You know, that that reminds me, it's kind of a twofold thing is um, we we want to let go of it, but yet we don't know what to let go of or we struggle with what. And we wonder, um, what does that say about me? Am I good enough to do this? Am I, can I manage it myself? So sometimes we'll look at ourselves and begin to doubt ourselves that um, I know starting this podcast, I said, oh my gosh, I don't know how to interview anybody. And yet, you know, you just jump in. And yes, and I think um, as we grow, we just start to say nothing is perfect. Everything is processed and happening as we move. Yeah. So I think that business is the same way. It grows. We learn, we grow as individuals. And, um, but it's that partnership and that's something you're really good at building relationships. And I think that's one place that uh, the person you bring on to help you is really going to um, be uh, it's really going to have the opportunity to grow because you will allow that. 
And that's, and that's the thing is, you know, I'm thinking about it in terms of, um, you know, my own, it, it's funny because I manage social media for my clients and I fall behind big time in my own. Um, I've gone and, and that's the thing. I mean, my, so my goal, my goal was by now I have a, I have a monthly newsletter. I have a, and, and that just, that just, it's not a subscribe thing. It's just for my, my network for, for people that I really want yes. to keep in contact with. Um, and, um, then I have, you know, LinkedIn is, is the platform that I post on LinkedIn is the, you know, what I'm, what I'm, I'm active on personally yes. and, um, and a LinkedIn newsletter that I was supposed to post to launch three months ago mm -hmm. I mean, for myself. And, and I'm two weeks behind on my LinkedIn posts and it's, thank you, you know, for being honest to the audience because I, don't beat yourself up. Oh, just no, be aware, no. like you're saying, but it's nice to be honest with people because they start beating themselves up and then yeah. they think, no, Ray said that, but she didn't give up. She just keeps going and catches up. Yeah. And maybe I, hire I somebody. Yeah. And that's, and that, but like, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, you know, if I have, if I have somebody that, you know, assisting me, what they can do is keep me accountable and we can sit ah. down and and talk about, um, okay, we're going to have a planning meeting and we're getting three months of newsletters done. Like, okay, we're going to have a planning meeting and like, we're getting two months of social media posts done, you know? So, whereas like, I, I at least then, you know, integrated a process for myself. You know, one of the things I do is I custom, I, I, I do custom work with CRM solutions, but automations and integrations and workflows. So social media management is actually one of those items as well. And so in my system that I built, which is in monday.com, um, for those of you that may be familiar with the tool, um, I, you know, I at least have like a system, whereas before I was really going off the cuff with it, which in, in practice, and again, this isn't going to be an unpopular thought, especially for any kind of social media manager out there, but to me, it's like, if you don't have, it's, it's like your mama told you when you were little, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at, at all. Social media is the same way. If you don't have something to contribute, um, don't force a post just to post. And so that's the thing. If you have something to contribute that, you know, whether, whether the, you know, the tactic is, you know, I want to try to get, get engagement. I want somebody to read a blog, you know, whatever the tactic, make sure that it's there as, as far as what you're feeling. You know, when I share somebody else's article on LinkedIn, it's like, it's because I've read it and literally think that it's valuable. It's not just to get a post out there. And hence why I haven't posted in two weeks because, you know, um, but you know what, that'll cause people to, when you do post, That'll cause people to say, what is Ray saying? What is Ray saying? What's the points that she's bringing out? So it shows that you speak when you've got value to add. So I, yeah, so I think that's a very good point to give people because I do believe that a lot of people think they should just post just to be out there every day, just doing something. And I agree. Yeah. The people that I like to follow are those that put something meaningful and value added out there. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, there's, of course, there's various strategies for various types of platforms, like something like if you're on Twitter, if you're trying to grow on Twitter and become a name, you got to be posting 20 to 30 times a day. So it's, you know, if you were on LinkedIn, four times a week is pretty big, pretty good, gets you a lot on LinkedIn. So it's like, you know, it really depends on, of course, the, you know, the strategy and everything behind that. So, well, I there, think there's different people on different platforms. Yes. Don't you think? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. So, you know, it, it like I said, it, it depends on, on where you're trying to corner your audience and, and things like that. And, um, but, you know, I'll say with, with that, if the thing is, the difference is though, I've gone two weeks without posting on LinkedIn, but I've been active on LinkedIn and I've gotten conversations going by looking at something that I'm finding value in. Yes. You know, I got an incredible newsletter that hit my inbox. Now I, this, 
this person um, was a connection, but it was a connection that I didn't know, you know, and I read it and it was so incredibly inspiring. It was this really awesome um, commentary on something that was about growing up as an in, um, first generation, you know, immigrant parents. Yes. And he talked about this um, very raw experience of being a child, watching watching your parents that where English is not their first language. And, um, you know, interacting with other people in the world and um, in this country, and then them seeing other people interpreting their not lack of knowing the language for stupidity, you know, or taking advantage of them because they think that they don't understand or something like that. And, you know, him just talking about that raw experience was like, you know, I'm not, I don't have parents that are immigrants and things. So it's like, I've never, of course, experienced that. But it was such a great point to, to, to point that out of, of that's, what you do experience that's definitely what you do experience i mean you yeah. could be surrounded by the greatest people in the world but that you're going to encounter somebody that's ignorant about that so you know that reminds um, that reminds me it's it's like I, I have to put a plug in about my book but hello yeah, a- <laughs> but these are hello self moments that really impact us. Like you said, it was a value to me because I hadn't experienced that. But for you, it was a hello self moment about, wow, that's what some people have to face. You know, I went to uh, TPAC, our local theater here in Nashville, Tennessee, and I saw Rhapsody in Black. It was a similar story to what you're saying about this immigrant. It was a one-man show He was a black man and he was telling his story. He was the only person on stage, but he was telling his story from a little boy looking out the window and seeing how uh, in his community blacks were treated and not understanding because he said I was 10 years old and I didn't understand. And he said, I at first didn't think much about it, but he said, then I got in my teen years and I got all caught up in all of this stuff about um, blacks and, you know, how they're less than and they're not smart. And he said, and I was angry. I got angry. So one of the hello self moments. But anyway, what I really liked about his, first of all, his story was very intriguing and So true, not only for Blacks, but for, like you said, people coming from another country or my son was adopted. And when he went to school, I remember some of the little children said, your parents didn't want you. So that's how you. So it's it's out there every place in our society that we have these wake up moments or these hello self moments that really impact and they impact our business, just like your relationship kind of thing. You would definitely look at now, how can I support that community? We have a a Latino uh, um, chamber of commerce here in town. And I really like the president because he gets out there and really supports those people that are coming into our community. So hello, self moments are really these kind of things that it'll impact your business. It may even impact the person you end up hiring. How do you know? But at least, yeah, at least your customers that you have. But I think that is so uh, such an important thing that you bring up because in here, in this podcast, it's not just about what happened to us in our business, it's about what impacted us in our, yes, in our journey, in our story yeah. journey. Yeah. So very good. I like that a lot. Yeah. So is there anything that you would specifically tell if, um, and, and I really want to focus on women today starting their business because I see you as being able to wrap the total package of what Sometimes women say, how do I, how can I have a family? How can I do this? How can I do that? How can I start my own business? And um, what would you, if 
you were talking coaching, which is what you do too. If you were telling someone, helping someone, they were talking to you, Ray, how'd you get started? What should I do first? What would you say to a person thinking about starting their own business, a woman specifically? Um, first, you've got to you've got to get out of your own head and just and just start. You know, if if you see an opportunity and you say, you know, um, whatever product or service you're going to offer, you're like, oh, you know, that's that's the person that I want to be serving. Well, first of all, you have to yeah. think about what you want to offer, huh? Well, of course, yeah. but that can kind of come naturally, though, wow. too, as it did with mine. I mean, yes. you know, that kind of just, you know, came came to be. And then I, you know, just just recently where I said, no, you know, these are really the areas I want to focus. And that's really where I'm, you know, more focused now. Yeah, I really like, let me interrupt one more time. I really like that a lot because that goes right along with your customer kind of thing. So you build the relationship and then how can I help this person do what they, I got you. Very good. Yes. And that's where the term solutionist really, really comes into play. It's not just a, it's just not a, a you know, a turn of a phrase. It's, that's literally what I, I, that's my approach as opposed to saying, these are my packages and we, and we do that. Not that there isn't a time and place for that because there is, but just the way that I work with people is, is being able to really say, okay, well, what do we, what do we need to focus on first? And then building out, you know, maybe project by project or, you know, say, saying, okay, this is what we're going to manage. And then maybe build onto this later or, or, you know, what have you. So, I would say, though, to go back to your question, anybody, you know, you've just got to get out of your head, your own head and just do it, you know, and and kind of stay in the moment with things um, and things will come to you as far as, you know, what to start off with. No, you may not have all your chips down, you know, you might not have your fine. OK, this is exactly what I'm doing for finance and, and things like that. You know, um, that's something if you need if you need investors, a business plan is where you start. Right. So um, but if you you know, you just got to keep it kind of hit the ground running. If it's if it's a technology product that you have a great idea for, it's the first direction forward is probably going to be meeting with a development team or, you know, uh, you know, like um, um, app companies or something like that. So. Um, and then kind of figuring out, OK, at least getting a base for cost and then saying to yourself, OK, maybe I need investors or maybe I don't or I'm going to try to develop part of this myself or so, um, you know, just using a couple of examples of it's going to vary, I think. And, you know, a, a solid business coach is probably going to tell you this is how you start and this is what you do. But for me let processes be much more organic and the fact that you're letting yourself be open to that is going to let your business evolve to where it should go as opposed to this is it and this is what I'm going to do and da, 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 and it has to be this way. Business is seldom like that. So um, and, life and is not like that either. Right. Oh, right. I just was and, working yeah. with a client last week and she moved here from Alabama. She's a um, CPA and um but she wants to change careers. And um, she, I was asking her what she thought she wanted. She said, well, you'll never believe this. Uh, I think I want to go into interior design or fashion. And I, New York has always been. So I said, no, that's not so different. I think sometimes that we're told by corporate America, because that's where I came from, too. You don't have any experience in that. Everybody has experience in what they want to do. We just have to find that experience. And another way, I think, is uh, anyway, what we did is I started connecting her with some people because she's not from here and she was working out of her home. So she was not networking. 
So I started helping her get connected with some people in the interior design world and the fashion world. So she's on her way now. And I think you're right. It doesn't matter where we start because that may not be where we end up from a business standpoint. But um, another thing that I would suggest to somebody, and I'm sure you, you said this in the very first part of your story, is to get out there and network a little bit and if you want to find out about fashion, where are some, I, I'm looking at podcast uh, networks now because I want to do that. So I think get out there where there are people doing what you think and it, and it could change your mind. No, that's not what I want. But I think that's another way to feel supported. Um, because, because I think it, sometimes when you start out, you, you're right. You doubt yourself. So you just got to have faith in yourself and let go of all the, oh, you can't make it kind of language, or you're too old for that. Or, oh, you don't have any background in that. Why would you want to go, you know, all those conversations we have are with ourselves. And I think, yeah. So um, this is very good. Is there any last minute thing you'd like to say? I'm going to ask you to give them information, but any last minute gym you'd like to leave with our audience? Um, you know, you said something before and that this is just recent, this just connected recently for me, but you know, I, um, coming through my corporate career and putting it all together, uh, you know, before I was in my own business, you know, I, I felt that kind of what you were talking about with, with the corporate kind of pressures in the corporate world of, oh, well, you don't have experience in this and you don't have experience in that. And, and, you know, and obviously I did land places. So somebody gave me a shot at some things, you know, so to build up my resume, but I still, you know, I, I always kind of envied back then people that were like, okay, you know, all through high school, okay, I'm going to go to college and I'm studying this and I'm coming out of college and then I'm starting this path and I'm going to become an attorney and I'm going to sit for the bar when I'm 26 and I'm da, 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 da. You know what I mean? And have this kind of plan. And I was never, ever like that. And I always <laughs> used to kind of get down on myself for that. <laughs> so the thing is, is that now I've, I've, what I call it as I completely changed the perspective on on that. And I call myself the queen of reinvention. <laughs> and why am I so great at, 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 and I shouldn't say so great, but yes, why do I yourself. understand? Why do I see the potential in people and get excited for my clients when I get to say to them, this is amazing. This is how you're reaching your audience. This is, this is you, you know, and, and then nurturing that because I've done it a hundred times yes. on myself. <laughs> so that's the thing. And I just, I'm putting that out there because anybody yes. else that is being crippled by thinking like that, I am telling you right now, that is a skill. That is a strong suit. That is not a weakness. That is not, you know, anything to feel bad about be at all. And, you know, I've, I still sometimes get like, well, you know, maybe I should really, really focus on one particular type of client and one particular, because uh, a lot of business gurus say it, right? Like one, yes, yes. You know, one particular thing. And I'm like, I, I found that that's not how I shine. So it doesn't work for me. And again, one of those things, advice I'm ignoring because it doesn't work for me that way. Exactly. And just like putting myself in a box doesn't work. So I go with the flow. <laughs> Same thing. You know, maybe that's why we get along so well is because that is exactly how I am. My family yeah. constantly says, okay, what are you going to be doing next year? Because I'm always doing something, writing songs, and I'm not even a songwriter or writing a book. I don't know, but I don't want to miss anything in life. And you're right. We don't fit in boxes. You know, I was watching, I believe it was the Oscars last year. And I remember when this guy, it was, I can't remember his name, but it was a gentleman that had received an Oscar and he got up to accept. And he said, there's one thing that I would like to tell in everybody out there that has a dream. He said, when I went to college, 
I went, just like you were saying a while ago, we follow this path. He said, I got into accounting because my family said, that's where you'll make money. And he said, I told him, I really want entertain. You won't make money there. It's too hard to do. So he said, I got my degree in accounting. And he said, I'm not saying it hasn't helped me. But he said, if you have a dream, go after it. Because he said, I got that degree satisfied my parents and got that degree. But he said, the very first thing I did was to get into something that was around acting. And he said, and look, I followed my heart. I followed my heart. And now I'm receiving this award. So always stay true to your dreams and who you are. You know, uh, society tries to fit us in a mold and to say, no, this is woman. This is how a woman is. You're either a mother or you're this. Oh, oh, you, you're not strong enough to do that. And and I'm not a big liber. However, I believe in acknowledging everybody and for them to acknowledge themselves. So I love what you, yes, what you just said. It's fabulous that um, get out of your head and into your heart, huh? Yes. <laughs> and just do it all. <laughs> just do it all, whatever. <laughs> That's the advice from Ray and I. Just do it all. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This has been so fabulous. I It's fun because we don't fun. sit down and talk this much. And so it's just kind of fun getting to know another side of you. And yeah. for you sharing with uh, my audience the gems of your own life and your own journey. So tell them a little bit about how they can reach you, uh, what you would be looking for in a client or anything that you'd like to do now, just as we begin to close out this podcast. Sure. Um, so my website is raygreenup.com. So that's R-A-E-G-R-E-E-N-I-P.com. Um, and so, you know, if you if you actually want more information on me, LinkedIn, you said it's a biggie can. for you. Yeah. And then, of course, um, you know, please always reach out to me on LinkedIn. I, you know, I love connecting and I do um, I do like to engage with my network and, and try to share some value there, um, especially when, you know, kind of um, the marketing world is very, very interesting right now because of the technology coming out, huge shifts as far as privacy which, um, yes. which I am welcoming a hundred percent. Um, I, I don't like putting my information out there and I, you know, marketing before the, the, you know, everybody's data being everywhere worked and it will work again. So it's one of those things. Um, but the cool, the really cool thing is, is, um, ex, you know, what's coming out about experience and a lot of this technology, people are thinking of it more like, you know, it's making our society less human and it's actually going to do the opposite. What it's going to do is technological experiences are going to be a lot more closely related to real real interactions, things that are much more personalized. Mm. So, and I'm not talking about, you know, the YouTube, YouTube spying on you and then speeding you ads on stuff you just Googled. I'm talking about actual, as you are a client experiencing things, as you're a customer in different brands that you're experiencing, it's going to be a really exciting time. So um, I'm just putting that out there. Um, yes. You know, so anybody that's got thoughts on that, definitely I'd love to connect with because I always love, you know, people that are on kind of the pioneering side of, of those things I love um, speaking with. So love to connect with you on LinkedIn. And and you said with social media, it's we're global now. You can actually create yeah. businesses in other countries or connections in other countries. So, yeah. yes. So it is a, a real fascinating time and it a is. time, a time for people like you and I, Ray, that like to get out there and explore. <laughs> It is. It's, yes. it, it's true. Yes. yes. Thank you so much. And I want to thank my audience for being here today, too. And again, I'm Patricia Leonard, host of Hello Self Podcast. And remember this, keep dreaming. Thank you for joining Hello Self today. And may it offer insight and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe. And remember this, keep dreaming.